Man, hi, I'm Ron. How's everybody doing today? Come on. I'm the last thing standing between you and a beer. How's everyone doing today? That's better. That's good. That's good. Man, this is a good crowd. A lot of good energy in here. Uh, my name is Ron Ferris. I run a studio called S23 in New York City. Um, it's a new unit in, at Nike where we obsess over building really emotional consumer experiences on mobile phones for our most fanatic fans. Uh, we came in a little weird. We were, uh, I actually, prior to that, I was at Virgin Group for about 10 years running brand for Virgin Mobile. Left to do a startup, and two years ago that startup was happily acquired by Nike. And uh, there's about 12 of us, we're about 40 right now. And uh, all we do is just build really, really weird things. I'm gonna show you some of those things today um, that are scaling around Europe and Asia. Um, really awesome stuff, and with a little hope, this will be the best presentation of your lives. So <laughs> thanks again for uh, coming and attending. Um, out of our studio, we, like I said, we deal with our most fanatical fans and those that are really, really uh, the most high energy and emotional are sneakerheads. Now, for those of you who don't know, the sneaker community is an incredibly passionate, beautiful, beautiful culture of people uh, that bring together music, design, fashion, all of these elements, art, um, into a world where it is rich with emotion. And it is just like a fanatical community, no, much, no different than a fanatical community of music, a fanatical community of video games. Um, and our goal when we joined and when we started to build our studio out of New York was to take the Sneakers app, which is the app that is tailored to our most fanatical, and bring that soul into the app. Bring it in a sense, now mind you, the app itself was very good at being a mobile store, which many other brands would be more than happy with that. But at Nike, we tend to push ourselves really, really hard. And in doing so, we wanted to add that emotion, that element of community, that layer, and most importantly, the soul into the app. So in doing so, we had to dissect what it meant to be a fanatical community. And when you think of a fanatical community, they all behave the same. Our fans wait in lines passionately, no different than they would for music tickets, no different than they would for a video game release. And the elements of a fanatical community are the same everywhere, in the sense that there's always like 15%, 15 to 20% of the community is made up of the most hardcore members of that community. They tend to alienate everyone else. They got all the time in the world. They obsess, they box everyone out and talk about it because they know more than everybody. And then there's 80 to 85% of that community that's more casual, that's dying to learn more, oftentimes doesn't know how to. And the trick is to get those that know the most those that have the most knowledge and get them to share it with those that know the least. So those that know the most are uh, peacocking or showing off how much they know because they were first to find it, because they were the one who unlocked it. And that in turn becomes content for the folks who are just down here trying to get to the next level of fanaticism, if that makes sense. So when you look at our, in the world of Nike, in the world of sneakerheads, our worlds of those 15 to 20% hardcores versus uh, our 80% style seekers, think of the hype beast as like the PhD in sneaker culture. Like they know everything about, you know, from the last 30 years worth of releases. And the style seeker is the person who's just trying to get a leg up and figure out how they can discover more. And these are the ingredients of a community, of a digital community. And when you think of a digital community, I keep mentioning this because if we're gonna to get to the future and talk about awesome things that we build that are gonna get people to shop, you can't do it without the power of a community these days. And the reason that is is because social networks have done so much in the last 10 to 15 years to move us into the thinking of where we need to go to sell product in more unique ways. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. If you, to, if you were to look at the origin of social networks, we start with the follow model. This is Facebook and Twitter. It's the more, the more followers you have, the more friends you have, uh, the more popular you are, the more influential you are, and that was it, real simple. What happened later were more, more and more 15-year-old kids were realizing, well, 
having 10,000 Twitter, anonymous Twitter fans isn't really authentic, and they wanted a tighter connection. So enter Snapchat. Snapchat was more of an intimate model, which bring peer to peer together, which made it a lot more intimate in people connecting smaller pool, smaller pods of people, deeper, deeper engagement. That moved to a third model, which is the model we're in right now. And this to me is the most exciting. It's a hybrid of the first two in the sense that it starts at the top with an influencer. This we call the tribal cult model. And when we say tribal cult, it's that this model is frankly replicated across different passions and areas of fanaticism. It could be bourbon, it could be sneakers, it could be music, anything along those. There's always going to be someone who's the most influential, there's the person who's the most hardcore below them that fast follows, and then there's the casual that spread more. These models and these networks are more the Instagram. If you look at Instagram, it's designed to have an influencer that behaves more like a digital mannequin, if anything else. And that digital mannequin inspires fashion to the hype beast who will then share with those um, that are far more, that are looking to learn more. So that those re the recipes, it's important to note because the recipes of a digital community, a fanatical community, are passion, energy, urgency. Those happen to also be the same recipe for what makes a successful social network. So it's no coincidence that these things need to marry themselves together so that as you have product and as you have releases and as you want to sell things, they need to seamlessly go between as quickly and as urgently as possible from node to node in social networks. So how does that look? When you build energy and virality, it's a three-legged stool. There's the product, key, obviously, for us, it's high heat shoes. It's the story, which is the mythology and folklore of that shoe, which hopefully can be told quick enough or abridged to 140 characters if you needed to, or shorter or for, to make it social friendly. And then there's the experience. And what we've seen is that the story and the experience these days can now be the same thing. In the sneaker world, how you get the shoe is almost as important as the shoe itself. And when you look at the story is the experience and look at the lens through that way, it's now about building features that can unlock, reveal, create that demand for the shoe in a way that people become irrationally feverish about it. And when they become feverish, that's where the energy kicks in and the emotion goes high. Once the community has energy and emotion high, it grows and it becomes more the product ends to the, the product ideally at the end sells through. So when we look at another key point when we talk about these folks is when we started in our studio, the, the main sharp point that we wanted to focus was we did these focus groups every month with kids. We plucked them from sneaker lines and we wanted to know, you know, what is it? And the number one thing they said is they miss that thrill of the chase. That was the sharp point that kicked off this body of work that made us take a step back and look at social and understand it this way. And at the end of the day, I don't look at these folks as shoppers. In my mind, these are gamers. And we needed to design features that would fuel their passion and make it as shareable as quickly as possible, right? So I'm gonna start showing you some of the first steps of how we did that, really weird things that we had to do. Remember, we were 12 people starting out in this company of 60,000 people trying to make a dent. And, um, and we've come a long way in the last 12 years, uh, 12 years, 12 months, sorry, man. Felt like 12 years? No. All right. So here's an example. This is the first thing we did. We had a couple of people um, who, th this shoe, let me first tell the story. This is the Blue Foam Posit 1. And again, I'm, I'm giving you a bit of the mythology and folklore of sneaker culture if you're not into it. But I encourage you to join because it is a fascinating, awesome ride. Um, this was a shoe most notably worn by Penny Hardaway of the Orlando Magic. And the, and the folklore of this shoe was that the NBA wouldn't let him wear it because it didn't have enough black in the shoe to match his uniform, so it was illegal for him to wear it, which he thought was stupid. So he loved the shoe so much, he took a black Sharpie pen and colored in 50% of the shoe to make it a, a, a legal, I guess, to wear on the court, and he did. And that was just such a great nugget that he loved the product so much that that story. So that's something you want to tell on the social campfires of Instagram and Twitter, but how do you do it in a way that really becomes an enriching emotional experience? So at the time, like I said, there was 12 of us. 
And we thought our best way without disrupting the momentum and e-commerce that was happening in the app itself, which was selling a lot of shoes at the time, um, we would bury Easter eggs in the app itself. And it, it worked kind of simply. You would go into the content thread, you would read about the shoe, but when you swiped through the product carousel, after you got to a certain point, your finger couldn't swipe more. Instead, your finger turned into a Sharpie. And no one knew this, no one knew the directions of it, we didn't say a word, but as a fan would fill in the same pattern of Penny Hardaway, something would happen. Oh, what's up? Penny here. Just hanging out here at the distribution center, checking out the anniversary edition of my AirFone Posit 1. I couldn't lace up my pair on court without a little pregame customization, but you can secure yours before anyone else. Look out for a push notification for an exclusive chance to cop my AirPhone Posit 1. The first person unlocked that in eight minutes from the second it posted through. That's how crazy some of these fans can be. In eight minutes, at minute nine, on Twitter, oh my God, the first batch of shoes is available for purchase. Well, how did you get them? Well, I went through and I, I, I had to scratch. Wait, what do you mean you had to scratch? I had to scratch, I had to create the pattern, the Penny Hardaway work. Why did you have to create that pattern? Well, because that's what made him forbid that he couldn't, that's what he wasn't allowed to wear on court. And now you're seeing the communities telling the story. You're not telling the story. The hype beast, the one hardcore player discovered it, acted accordingly, oops, acted accordingly, and then uh, shared it all of the trade press, all the press followed the followers and started reporting on what the followers in that were going. It's like Happy New Year. <laughs> Confetti. Congratulations, everybody. Um, so in that instance, uh, what we saw was we were, we, you know, this was a small thing we did with, you know, no eyes on us and we were thinking, let's just try it. We were hoping at best for 5,000 unlocks uh, of people just kind of excited to do this. By the end of uh, by the end of the day, we had hit something like 100,000 unlocks of that. And those are all people who came to put down to want to purchase because they, they got emotional in realizing how they unlocked the product, how excited they were, and how they wanted to do it. So at that point, we realized we were onto something, and what if we could build bolder experiences and really take more time into doing that? And that's what gave birth to Stash. Stash um, was the next feature that we built. Stash is our version of Pokemon Go. It's basically our way of uh, digitally burying our footwear product anywhere in the world and let the community, those who are most curious and most hardcore, come find it themselves. The fans in the app are able to get, basically uh, check into the location, see hints of where the product is, and then if they're lucky enough to be in the GPS coordinates, they can unlock it. We've since scaled this across Europe. As we speak right now in Europe, we're building out scaling teams to build these experiences, make them even more robust around, the, um, around Europe and the world. And um, I'll walk you through exactly how it works. So we did this with a partner designer of ours named Don C for Jordan 2. And you tap into the experience and you'll see locations, hints of photos with the inventory at those locations. You tap the image and from your couch, you'll see a 360 image of where you are. There's only one button and it says, I'm here. You run your ass down to the spot and you tap, I'm here. If you're in the location, fortunately at the GPS coordinates, hopefully, you found them. And at that point, you can pay and purchase. Now, just to show you the energy of what this thing can do in a community, I'm gonna show you a clip, and on my kids, I swear, this is, this is a video, this isn't like sizzle agency video stuff, this is like me with my phone, eight minutes after the push alert went out to everybody, we digitally hid the shoes at Washington Square Park in New York City, and right after the push alert went out, my, our whole team bolted down there and ran down there in about five minutes. I turned on my phone and this is what I saw. So we're gonna start with my friend here with the stroller, who should be the poster boy of the culture. <laughs> now I'm here pretending like I'm playing along, but I'm really filming everyone. Uh, and in a few seconds, someone will yell off screen that they found it, and this is what happens. <laughs> This is shopping for us. 
the moment, which is very safe, it's a safe moment, uh, immediately takes the attention of the entire place of people who were there and people who weren't there, basically saying, what the hell happened here? What, what, what was this? And that's exactly the type of lightning rod of energy that we want to create. Over here now, everyone's checking out. And let me show you, this is checkout. And in my world, this to me, we're calling this line 2.0. No longer are fans sleeping out uh, for sneakers uh, in a linear line, exhausted. These are pods of two to three people huddled around phones, helping each other get the shoe. This is the visualization of what a social community does. And at this point, whether you have people who are purchasing, you'll see once in a while people kind of like scream and say, got them, and freaking out. Um, it really adds a level of energy that's just unusual. There's my boy. <laughs> um, it really is a transcendent experience. And it's great because it, it shows that you're changing behavior. And when you can change behavior, and to have Nike have the honor to change behavior of a sneaker culture that it co-founded, that it helped found, that's when you start to shape the culture yourself. And that's when it becomes even more exciting. And I'm so proud to say, we're now scaling this around the world. We're now seeing that on the left, that's London. That's a London stash. On the right is uh, Barclays Center uh, basketball, at a basketball game, um, where we're able to do it there. We can turn any place into a retail store, just based on the storytelling of why we picked that location in that place. And it's going to be going to China, it's going to be going to Japan over the course of the next few months. And right now, we're just getting started beefing it up in Europe. Lastly, I'll say about Stash, this is really the area where um, uh, we have a partnership with Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Lamar right now has five shows where during those shows, I think we're two into them right now, I think the third one is tonight, where during his concert in the bowl, during the show, we are dropping the, his, Kenny, his signature, Kenny Cortez 3. And that moment, at the heat of the moment, in the moment, as fans are absolutely impassioned, is magic to be able to have them unlock product right there and be able to pay and purchase. At that point, it's not shopping. It transcends shopping. So where do we take that feature from here? We believe, after I saw that piece of content, which is, by the way, the favorite video I've ever shot on my phone ever, and that includes like the birth of both children. <laughs> <laughs> that video was so awesome because it, most importantly, it told our team, this is spectator content. People would watch this. People would want to see a stash happen in Tokyo from Wichita, Kansas. And I can bring sneaker culture to the people and the masses in cities that don't get sneaker culture. It doesn't have to be New York, LA, London all the time. It can be, everyone can have a hand in it. So in a few months, we'll be building, we'll be launching a version of Stash that allows those that unlock in key cities, gifting access of a pair to someone else in another city that typically doesn't get sneaker access. And that unlock component is really powerful because again, going back to the slide earlier, those who are the most engaged peacock that they found at first, and then they pay it forward to those who are willing to discover more. Always down the same mindset in that. Now, we took that even further, and we are imagining way in, uh, uh, even further into the future that we could use augmented reality to bring the community into your home and allow you to engage with that community and see. This is what we call Stash Squads, a possible future where you can, we built this in augmented reality as a demo. And the idea is that you would find your squad on your living room floor. The city would be in your town and you could see all the members of the community who are out hunting for their shoes. And in that, by finding them, that's the distance they are from the stash spot. If they have room on their team, you can join it and you can tap ahead. And now you're watching the live stream of them hunting in Washington Square Park. And the best part is as they go through, once they can unlock the shoe, once you unlock the shoe in Washington Square Park, it unlocks for them too. So now you bring a twitchy, gamey style because remember, these people think more like video gamers. Now this is one segment of sneaker culture community. There's other, there's women sneaker heads, there are collectors, there are different characters. These are the features that we really honed in on this tribe of people. And now our goal is to scale that onto more people who scale into, into the more of those style seekers we were talking about. Here comes Cam. So Cam is the next feature we launched, sneakers camera. This one was super fun. This is basically us embedding uh, a camera in the sneakers app that just unlocks 
Um, basically, it's like a decoder ring that could unlock augmented reality 3D models uh, in any piece of media or any target. So the idea came to us when David Chang, the famous chef, runs Mamafuku. Um, he apparently is a really big sneakerhead, and he had an SB dunk that he was dropping with Nike. And we thought, wouldn't it be sick if we could just basically bury that shoe in his menu? And the only way people could access it is if it were like a special that just popped up off of the menu. And the idea was basically that you could take and look at any of his stores or anywhere online and go through and through the menu be able to pull and look at the shoe and, and purchase it right then and there. We launched that and since that have been scaling that also across Europe and North America, China, Japan. Because it plays into very, AR punches so far above its weight, it makes things really emotional when you unlock them as an incredible surprise and delight moment. And the reason this feature is especially special is if you look at how the feature works, we take a target, which frankly is any piece of art and can unlock a 3D model, in this case a shoe. But what's most powerful is in a second, you'll see a second phone enter the frame and that phone will take a picture of the target. And as that phone takes a picture of the target, on a phone, it can unlock the shoe for purchase. So you're now watching a viral effect happening. So now imagine I can take a piece of artwork, a new Kendrick Lamar album art, drop it in his Instagram story, and now he becomes the exclusive digital pop-up shop. Or it could be Tom, who's just a sneakerhead, who's just a fan of the brand. And what you have is, because that influencer now has the asset that is the digital pop-up store, that person becomes the most influential among their pod, and all those people follow that person. So this is a great example of a feature that can grow up. It starts very simply as just an AR unlock, which frankly, most of you probably would roll your eyes and say that's another dancing pickle that's on a table that's like a typical novelty item. Our goal is to give purpose to augmented reality in the form of celebratory celebration of a purchase event. And then we see that heading to a point of utility where two people can work on AR models together, potentially to do other more, more bolder experiments. But for now, the shoe for us is an experiment. And it doesn't have to be in sneakers. Right now, we can see that we, you can take any piece of media, a subway shelter, bus shelter, out of home, and now that can become your pop-up store. So why bother with a 10-year lease you have to sign to open a store? Why bother with any, uh, with any form of uh, pop-up rent you have to pay when, in fact, you can turn any piece of creative into an unlock, into an unlock of product? Last month, our feature was featured at uh, Facebook's F8 keynote, in the keynote, and we decided to trial bringing that augmented reality camera into the Facebook experience, specifically into Messenger. And it was our first time saying, let's go where the energy is. If the energy's in Messenger or Instagram, we shouldn't be precious to make people come always just to our turf. Sometimes there are away games, and in those away games, you want to be just as passionate there as well. So, in this experience, we made it so that you could um, get notified by the messenger, by sneakers messenger experience of when the drops were. But if you knew the secret knock, which was a couple of emoji, you'd be able to unlock an amazing experience, uh, which would be a presentation of a shoe that was available only to you to see. And in this case, it was the Kyrie 4 uh, red carpet. Uh, in this case, it's unlocked for you to share with your friends and or purchase. Again, the secret knock was the key here, the ability to make it a special experience that felt like you were somewhere you weren't supposed to be and you discovered something to be able to do it, but to do it at scale. Lastly, last feature I'm gonna show you is called Shock Drop. This one's super, super easy. All it is basically is the, uh, a takeover in the app of a shoe sold instantly at that time in real time uh, in the app or at 10 other stores that we choose. And it's great for following on on a trend of a conversation that's happening. Most successfully, we use it during the Super Bowl halftime show when Justin Timberlake was doing his show. The conversation on Twitter was, what are those Jordan 3s he's wearing? Those are the Jordan 3 Tinker Hatfields. And right after this, we launched them in the app, just dropped at that moment in time, taking advantage of live, taking advantage of in the moment. And if you missed it, there was a cousin shoe, super similar that you could go through and that sold out too. These types of experiences are all meant to be a very simple 
utility belt for brands to use and put together on the types of experiences they want to create to, for the future of retail in that. This video just sums up those that we've created. Nobody pray for me. It's been a day for me. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I remember syrup sandwiches and crime allowances, but nesting on them with some counterfeits, but now I'm counting this. Here. Look out for a push notification for an exclusive chance to cop my airphone pause one. I still beat the greatest phone. Holla, 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 holla. Sit down. Holla, holla, holla. Me on move. Holla, sit down. Holla, holla, holla. Me on move. Holla, holla, sit down. Holla, holla, holla. Me on move. Holla, holla, sit down. Sit down, me humble, sit down, me humble, sit down, me humble, sit down, me humble, sit down, Well, thank you. Uh, thanks so much. That's a bit of the world of what we created. Always make sure that uh, as you're building for that community, that you really um, build energy, live in the present, all that stuff. Thank you so, so much to Next Web. This is a great party. It's a great fest. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much, guys. Yeah.